Here are a couple of structural wall framing videos you might find interesting. So let's go ahead and get started with the first video. In this video, I will try and provide you with a better connection, or at least in my opinion, it's going to be a better connection for a shear wall that's going to have hold downs that are going to connect through the floor to the building foundation. And I've used this method before, but since I found a better method, I probably will not be using this method again unless it was specifically specified by a structural engineer because I would rather connect the 4x4 to the building foundation so simply lower the hold down and the post instead of having it like this and one of the problems you're going to have if you do something like this and you use the anchor bolt required by the manufacturer of the hold down will be that it might not be embedded into the concrete far enough if you actually do it this way, which you're not going to. Most people are not going to do something like this because it's not going to meet the manufacturer's requirements. So that what they'll do instead is lower the anchor bolt so that it does meet the manufacturer's installation instructions and then add a coupler or a coupling to it. However, you will need to check with the manufacturer to make sure that you can use a coupler for something like this. I would imagine with larger hold downs, you might not be able to use a connector. So make sure that you run this by your structural engineer also. Don't just rely on the manufacturer. And yes, I've seen problems created by using couplers on the jobs. So just don't rely on the manufacturer for something like this. Check with the engineer whose name is on the building plans. And again, do not get a verbal okay from this. Make sure that you have something in writing. Otherwise, you are going to be paying for any repairs and not the person who okayed this over the phone. Another thing you might be able to do, and this might be on your building plans as another alternative also, would be to use a longer connector like an all thread that's going to have something like this on the bottom. You might have a nut on the top with a large square washer and another nut on the bottom that can be firmly embedded into the concrete. And again, I got to stress this, this might not be an approved construction method for your project. However, if it is, make sure that you add a block, something like this in the floor framing to get some additional structural support for the hold down going through the floor framing. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the method I like the best. And again, that would be running the 4x4 down to the top of the sill plate that will be sitting directly on top of the building foundation. And with this method here, you're not going to need a coupling or the all thread. And in my opinion, you're going to create a stronger shear wall because now you're not going to be relying on a load transfer through the floor framing. Now keep in mind that something like this is going to be a little more difficult for the framing contractor to build and might require a few more dollars. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to figure out the cost difference between doing something like this on a project that might have a lot of hold downs. Another thing you're going to need to do will be to add a block and that block should extend a little bit past both sides of the 4x4. And let's go ahead and take away the wall framing plates to give you an idea of what something like this is going to look like before you lay out and frame the walls. And in some situations, even though I've never ran into this, you might need to use both methods. Connect one to the foundation, one to the floor framing, in order to avoid a specific problem you're going to run into on your project. Now another thing that's going to add a few more dollars to your project will be the longer shear panel or the additional amount of shear panel required to extend the shear wall all the way down to the building foundation. Here's something that most engineers understand and even some builders when it comes to connecting two corners with shear panel or even exterior sheathing to create a stronger bond. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one here, just a regular 2x4 at the end. And this situation here might have three 2x4s right next to each other to provide you with drywall backing for the inside. And you can see here how the nails are going to be used to attach the shear panel to the framing stud. So here we just have one framing stud. 
However, most of the time we're going to have two additional framing studs with the possibility of a hold down. And a hold down is going to be used to securely fasten or anchor either a post or framing studs to the concrete foundation with the help of a larger anchor bolt. And I'll show you how that will be installed at the end of the video. So a piece of framing hardware that will use either screws or bolts to attach it to the wall framing studs or post and a anchor bolt that will be embedded into the building foundation. Now, if we're looking for something a little stronger, we can install a four by four post or even a four by six post. And a four by six post would be helpful if you have shear panel going on the inside and you're not planning on moving this framing stud over to run the shear panel through. And since we have a four by four here, we're going to be able to put more nails in it or at the very least create an area area that might not allow the lumber to split as easy. If we were to put a bunch of nails like this into a 2x4 and we're going to put all of these nails in the same spot going all the way down, you can see where something like this could split the lumber and I've seen it done before. And if that's the case, you might consider staggering the nails. And this might actually be something that the engineer will require on the building plan. So if you see staggered nails at either the bottom, top, or the sides, then that would look something like this. If we had six inches on center nailing, then we would simply move one over, come down three inches, move it over, and then have two rows of nails, one over here, one over here, and of course, we could install the staggered nails on both sides, here and here. And now for the reason why I made the video, I've seen this happen too many times, where the structural engineer might require a hold down over here and intersecting walls with shear panel. It's something I recently came across that inspired me to make the video. And that would look something like this, where we have our shear panel on the interior wall, starting over at this point here. However, it's not starting at this point over here. Now this right here is how I see it done a lot because the engineer is going to call out for shear panel running on this wall and on this wall. However, they might not provide you with a detail on how to make this stronger, especially if you're going to be using a hold down. So you can see here where there is a gap between this shear wall and this shear wall. We've got some nails going into our framing stud. And the structural connection that I'm looking at here is basically going to be just in the top plates and any nails that would be attaching the framing studs together. And all we need to do to make this stronger is to install a 4x4 here and then run the shear panel over to here. And of course we're going to have to redo the shear panel on the other side to make this connection stronger. Stronger. You might not need to relocate the shear panel. Something like this might be okay, but why do it when all you need to do is break the shear panel on the center of the 4x4 so that instead of having an inch and a half to nail the two pieces of plywood at the break together, you'll have three and a half inches. And of course, by running the shear panel all the way over to the 4x4, like you're looking at in this example here, we're going to get an excellent connection between the two shear walls because the engineer won't always have a detail like this. And of course, you can stagger the nailing and there's no reason to notch the framing plates. You can simply notch the shear panel over the framing plates and then nail the stud over the shear panel. And you could always nail the heck out of this framing stud into the 4x4 and then put some additional nails through the shear panel on the other side if you're looking for a little more structural strength. But we're going to need something here for drywall backing. And of course, this is the main reason why most builders miss this. They frame the walls and then butt the shear panel up against the framing stud or the wall here. They don't let it run through and it's not that difficult to do. And believe it or not, this is something I started doing years ago. I don't know when or if I ever came across a detail that required it. It was always done the other way, which this way here just seems so much better, especially if you're going to be using a hold down. If a hold down is required for either this wall here or this wall here. And that should look something like this, a 4x4 post with a hold down bolted to it 
and then another bolt, anchor bolt, attaching it to the building foundation or to the floor framing. And even though this one here won't always be called out by the structural engineer to be located right here, the corner one probably will. This is the ideal location for the corner and is probably going to be specified with a detail or the engineer will provide you with a specific location on the floor plan. If this one here is not located here, it's over here, then you might want to point it out to the structural engineer to see if they want to move it. If not, locate it where the structural engineer on record for your building plans has it located. Because most engineers aren't going to want to go back and do any modifications without getting paid for it if they've already been approved by the local building department. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.